Yeah, because we've had the Christmas break. Hey everybody, I'm about to do my radio show. I'll keep him to the pool. My husband's just taken off with the French phone, which is what we use. Gosh, it looks like I've got no makeup on and I do actually have um, a bit of eyeliner and stuff. Anyway, how are we all on this good old, slightly dreary Monday? Are we ready for the new week? Oh my gosh. I know I am. So what does it say here I'm going to do today? Oh yes, the first Mercury retrograde of 2022. As if, uh, what do you call it? As if Venus retrograde wasn't enough. Now, now let's have a Mercury retrograde as well. Is that him? Yep. Ah, Louis has called. Always leaves it to the last second just to keep me on my toes. Should be here. Yeah. Hi, hi, Louis. How's it going? Good, thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Had a nice holiday season there. Yes, we've had a lovely holiday season. Thank you. How about you? Oh, mine, mine was great. Just a lot of really nice times with family. Oh, that's what we had as well. Can't complain. At all. It's all been good. Anyway, I'm ready to go. What have we got? Three minutes? Got about, three, about ten seconds from the top of the hour, so about three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. All right. Um, can I have the show, please, Louis? Sure thing. Moment. Thoughts on the power of home. We're Featuring just waiting to get on air. All right. Light is within you, beloved one. In the meantime, long journeys to find here's home. a card for everybody I've who's listening lives, or watching paths, right now. Paths, Are you ready for a card? Ask your question silently or out loud. That our collective journeys oh no, the silly old light home. keeps going off. Not too far Makes me look. We see each other's light reflecting a guide, a path <laughs> towards home. Alexa, I'm making an announcement. Like our spirit sings a song of truth. Mm -hmm. Darling, the Cut light keeps going on and off. Self-expression. Ah, well, that's what it's telling me. Attend to the details. I oh my God, I'm doing a big thing on Facebook this tonight as well. One second, guys, and we'll be live. Which one? This one. It keeps going on and off. Thanks for listening to Unity Online Radio. It's just started doing it about a month ago. Maybe we need a new one because you used it so much. Don't touch it, it seems to be alright. Maybe just in. Danny, could you pass me the next one? Yeah. 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 Take a minute to slow down. Check out Unity's monthly meditations. Each month a new one is released for free. Just go to unity.org slash meditations and take a minute to align with spirit. These are short guided meditations that you can fit into any busy schedule, covering topics like healing, inner peace, gratitude, and more. We create our life experiences through our thinking. Give yourself a break today and get back in balance in about three minutes. Activate That's a stars party. I don't know what that means, but I'll have a go. Charles Gilmore and other legendary Unity teachers with Reverend Bob Brock and Unity. I don't know what that means, activated stars party. You need that book. Yes, you do need that book. Nessie Ness. Explore these timeless teachings and learn how to apply them to your life today. Listen live or on demand. You can also connect with Bob on his Unity in Action Facebook page. Nearly ready, guys. Call now with your question. 
question or comment. 816-251-3555. That's 816-251-3555. Hey everybody, it's Yasmin Boland here, ready to give you your astrology for the week ahead. Uh, how's everyone going? I should start by saying Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is my first show for the new year. And uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, hello, hello. Thanks for your patience. And for those of you who are actually listening to this as a podcast, because it's a podcast podcast, that Unity do, and I also do it as well. Um, sorry about all that carry on before I started. <laughs> I started I start too soon. Um, I'm having issues with the fact that um, I can't seem to access the stack, uh, Louis. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do calls today. I might. Um, I'm not really sure what to do about that because um, I do want to take calls. We might be able to fix it up in the break. So I'll, I'll say that I'll uh, I'll do the calls in the second half of the show. Um, if you want to um, get in the queue, be my guest. Um, it's 816-2513-555. So how are we all? Are we all on track? How are you feeling about 2022? That is the big question. Um, one thing I can tell you straight off the bat is that 2022 is going to be easier than 2020 or 2021, which I'm very, very happy to be able to report that. So um, the reason why it's going to be easier is that um, the astrology is about 25 million times nicer and better. Um, and as I keep saying, whenever I say that, that's just an estimate. But truly, it's so much better. And I think we've all seen, haven't we, that um, that uh, Omicron seems to be, as we hoped, saving us all. In other words, it's milder and it's dominant. So hopefully we are on track for a good um, a good year. So let's just talk about that just for a second. Um, and also, just for, the, just for the record, I've actually, my husband came in and gave me my other computer where the stack actually is working. So I can see you online, Janine and Pauline. Um, okay, so basically, where do we begin? Let's talk about the astrology that's coming up, you know, first of all, and then we can talk about uh, the astrology of... Um, Sorry, the astrology of this week. So basically, this year, all the biggest action of the year takes place in the first half of the year. So by the time we get to the second half of the year, there's barely anything happening, astrologically speaking, you know, in terms of big stuff. Um, we have small stuff, but we only have... Um, the, so what's big stuff? Big stuff is things like when you have outer planets connecting. Um, you know, I'm just trying to get this up on my computer. Just bear with me a second because I had to change computers. Oops, outers. There we go. So we're talking about the outers. Um, hang on. I pressed the wrong button. because There we go. So looking at the year, outers. Are you ready? So basically what we get. So... In January, there's really nothing much happening apart from the fact that um, Uranus, the planet of chaos and craziness, uh, is going to stop its latest reverse cycle and start to go direct, uh, which means a couple of things. So the first off is that January um, is going to have started off probably a little bit chaotic, uh, as I'm being a little bit chaotic here, as I so often am, even though my New Year's resolution is to be more organised. Um, I was trying to be organised today, but I had the wrong, my computer just wasn't working. So lucky I have two computers and a very kind husband. Um, but so Uranus going backwards is kind of like, what's, what that means is, so Uranus is the planet of chaos, okay? So just imagine that you've got the planet of chaos going forwards, like, 
like think of it like a, a pendulum swinging and causing a bit of mayhem and chaos as it goes like to me uranus i mean it is the liberator and the awakener and it brings radical change and sudden turnarounds and all that but the way i see it in my head when i think of uranus the planet of uh chaos um the modern ruler of the sign of aquarius just by the way and we all have aquarius somewhere in our chart that's just how astrology works um, I see it like, you know, a pinball machine. Do they still have those or are they just so old fashioned? Nobody even knows what a pinball machine is. I think they do. I think even my son who's 15 has played pinball. Um, but you know, it's where you pull the ball back and it bounces through and then it goes ping, 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 ping. And then you get the flapping things. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, it's like a crazy game of pinball. That's kind of how I see the planet of chaos Uranus. Okay, so it's going through your chart, ping, 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 pinging, pinging the other planets. Last year, Saturn was pinging it, which is why last year was so difficult, because we had mean, nasty old Saturn and the planet of chaos at odds with each other. That's why last year was a bit of a air. Eh. This year, though, for one thing, we're starting off with this month, uh, Uranus going forwards again. Now, what does that mean? It means Uranus has gone forwards, okay, ping, ping, ping. Then it gets to a certain point and guess what? It starts to retrograde. So it, And it stays retrograde for a few months, okay? So it's going backwards and it's like, oh my God, more of the chaos. And it, what it does when it goes backwards is it hits the same planets that it was hitting when it was going forward. So you get like a double dose of all the chaos. But in theory, the way it works with retrogrades, and I'll talk about Mercury retrograde in a minute as well. The way it works with retrogrades is that um, by the time it starts to retrograde and go backwards and starts to ping all the same planets again it's the second time it's happened to us so we should be starting to get a handle on it we should be starting to understand what it means how to handle it you know and i'll give you a tip a free tip here the way to handle uranus is to live and let live in my opinion um, that's not necessarily something they teach you at astrology school. They teach you that, you know, Uranus is out of control and all this sort of stuff. But it's very much, for me, the only way to deal with this crazy effing energy of Uranus is to live and let live. Okay, so it goes forwards, bing, 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 chaos, chaos, chaos ensues. And then it goes backwards, bing, 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 bing. And it's like, oh my God, have you learned how to do this yet? Have you learned how to handle this out of control situation or person or place or whatever in your thing? In your chart in your life and then finally you get to where we are right now which is the end of the retrograde this month it's on what date 18th of january so that's eight days away okay but it's worth talking about now because it sets the tone for the whole year and it starts to go forwards again and then it what does it do it goes ping 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 all those same places in parts of your chart the same planets the same angles the same houses they're all going to get pinged again, but I'm doing it softly now. Ping, 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 ping. Because you should, we should, I should, all of us should know by now how to deal with this energy because we've had the third pass. So it's pass number one when it's going forwards, pass number two when it retrogrades, and then, oh, pass number three and it goes forwards. And finally, that's it and off it goes. It only ever goes backwards and forwards like that you know, the three three passes of the retrograde. So on the one hand, if your life has been a bit chaotic lately, that could be why, because we've had Uranus sort of going forwards and then retracing its steps. So basically covering the same part of your chart. And remember, every part of your chart represents a certain part of your life. So we've had going forwards, ping, 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 going backwards, ping, 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 saying more chaos in the same part of your chart and your life. And then now finally, Ping, 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 ping. Have you learned how to handle it? Have you let go? Have you stopped trying to control everybody and everything? That's kind of the message of Uranus, live and let live. So that's going to sort of set January up, but it's not really what you call the planetary alignment. It's literally just one planet, Uranus, ending its retrograde. The first big bit of action, although it is pertinent, the fact that last year when we had all the Saturn-Uranus clashes, that's why it was such a hard year, okay? We all know it was a hard year. It's over now. Goodbye, done. So the next thing that happens is on February 18, actually, so exactly one month later after the retrograde ends, guess what's going to happen? Jupiter, the big purple planet, the planet of good luck and good times 
and optimism and positivity is going to harmonize with Uranus, the planet of chaos. But as I said, chaos, awakening, liberation, radical turnarounds, change, busting out, cutting the ties that bind, saying I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And it's like the planet that pushes us forwards, whether we are ready or not, like literally pushes humanity forwards, whether we're ready or not. And so in February, Jupiter is going to make a harmonious aspect to Uranus. Now, this is great news, okay? And I really want you to get this as the year begins. And I think I think I've been I've been saying this probably since November, uh, if not earlier, definitely since November when Omicron was discovered. We shouldn't go into fear about Omicron. I kind of don't need to say that anymore because I think it's all pretty clear that we shouldn't go into fear about Omicron, um, even though it is obviously very difficult for the hospital system. And if you're a healthcare worker, we completely appreciate everything you're doing. But when I say we shouldn't go into fear about it, what I mean is Omicron is not going to be like it was with Delta. The problem is for the, it really the problem is for the healthcare systems um, because it's so contagious that it, it is going to probably, you know, put a real, put the healthcare systems to the test. But overall, it's not going to lead to the same nightmare. And I, I mean, I've been saying this for months now. It's, what is it, January, November, December? I've been saying it for two months at least, two and a half months. So, but, and in a way, I don't even need to say it anymore because it's all come to pass. But it's not the same situation as it was with COVID when it first started. It's not even the same as Delta. And even though it is a bit of a nightmare or a lot of a nightmare for anybody who gets it and ends up in hospital and anybody who works on the front line of the healthcare system, because probably they are being overwhelmed again because of the sheer contagiousness of the virus, it is milder, as we've been told since pretty much day one. So what are we going to get then? What I mean, because with astrology, you have to kind of put it in context. That's why... You know, as much, I mean, when I write my diaries, okay, there's my 2022 diary, which is practically sold out now. It's definitely sold out from Amazon um, UK. You can only get it on Marketplace and a few places like that. Um, so grab your copy if you don't have one yet, Moonology Diary 2022. Um, when I start to write them, you know, it's a year and a half earlier, so it's really hard to know. But when I looked at the astrology for 2022, I'm like, no, it's going to be okay. It's hard because it's a year and a half in advance and it's hard for me to put it in context because I don't know exactly what's going to be happening. I just know the general overall vibe. But now, here we are in January 2022, I can put Jupiter sextile Uranus into context because we are nearly there. And when you think about what's going on in the world, okay, Omicron, much milder, becoming the dominant virus... What do we think then is going to be the result of Jupiter, the planet of good luck and positivity, making a harmonious alignment to the planet of change and liberation? Hopefully, we finally get to cut loose out of this whole jolly nightmare that we've all lived the last few years. And I, I just want to reiterate um, something because I was saying, you know, we don't need to go into fear and it's not a big disaster, Omicron. I am really aware of the fact that especially for people who work um, on the front line of the health uh, departments, you know, that, I mean, I don't even know how we ever repay these people. Um, my dad was a doctor, so, you know, I have a complete respect for anyone who works in the healthcare. I didn't mean to make it sound, if I sounded like I was minimising that, I didn't mean to. But what I mean is for, as a, as a for humanity, it's not going to be what it was like uh, we, when, when COVID first started and we were all, you know, it was just, even worse but it was kind of worse to everybody right now for the rest of us life is probably starting to go a little bit back to normal at the very least if you're a healthcare worker you know i mean we all marched against you know all sorts of things over the years i think we should all be taking to the streets and marching for these people to get paid more frankly and actually the teachers as well because the teachers have soldiered on and the people who work at the supermarkets and the people who work for Amazon and the people who do the supermarket deliveries and all that, they have soldiered on, okay? And I definitely 100% support all those people with all my heart and um, and I hope everybody else does as well. So I didn't, I don't mean to minimise that. What I'm trying to say is as a, as a race, 
it is going to be much much easier as the year unfolds so that's january and then in um we don't actually get another um big bit of astrology until jupiter neptune in april so i'll get to that um, as the year unfolds but just to know this is going to be a better year and i've been saying that for a long time and i really um i really hope that you can hold keep the faith there's a question on facebook wendy what about radical change in all education systems yes actually i think are you in my did you do my last workshop because somebody in my last workshop that i just did i do a monthly workshop by rising sign We'll be doing Aries Rising next if you want to join us. Just go to moonmessages.com forward slash written, W-R-I-T-T-E-N, because it's written in the stars. Somebody asked that. They said they wanted to change the whole education system, which was pretty darn impressive. And, you know, what we said is let's break it down, you know. And, and so with the education system, anybody who wants to change the education system, I think we have to start at grassroots and just go one thing after the other after the other. All right, so there we go. That's my little opening rant for the day. Um, what I want to talk about now, actually, you know what? I am going to do a little chant just to get us in the zone because I've been ranting a bit. And you know, I like a good rant. <sighs> so let us start with a little chant. I'm going to do the chakra clearing chant, which is the one I just do all the time these days. And it would just clear us out and help us to get realigned. It's Monday, I think, pretty much wherever you are in the world, although I think it's already Tuesday in uh, Australia because I was just speaking to my mum before and it was after midnight. But in most parts of the world, it's Monday. It's the start of the week. If you're in Australia, I won't tell you to go to bed because I don't like it when people say, go to bed. Uh, so I'll say, oh, you're a night owl. But let's do the chant, okay? Here we go. I'm going to chant it three times to clear our chakras. Let's set the intention of clearing our chakras for the week ahead. Here we go. Hari Om Nam Lam Mam Vam Sim Ram Vam Yam Yam Ham Shiva Ram Swaha Hari Om Nam Lam Mam Vam Sim Ram Vam Yam Yam Ham Shiva Ram Hari Om Nam Lam Mam Vam Sim Ram Vam Yam Yam Ham Shiva Ram Swaha <sighs> Well that's better isn't it? Um, for those of you who don't know, that is a chakra clearing chart that I got from my teacher in India, Sri Shakti Narani Amma, probably now three, four years ago. And I remember when I first started to chant it, I, I said to Natalie, the woman who was teaching it to me the first time, who just remembered it off by heart, I said, how do you remember it off by heart? And she said, I don't know, I just do. And now, all these years later after chanting it, I literally just remember it off by heart now and I even don't even have to think about it. I just start to chant it and it just takes over and it just comes out. So there you go. Life is amazing. And also, just for those of you who don't know, I do chant it all the time, so loads of you will know about this. But um, actually what it is, it's uh, the um, Bija mantra sounds for the chakras and for example, yum is the heart chakra, yum. Um, and the elements for the panchabhuta, the five um, elements. Um, so there you go. All right, so I could take a call. Shall I take a call? Maybe I'll just take a call. Let me take a call. Because now I do actually have um, the stack. The stack is working. So Louis, be aware, I'm about to take a call. Here we go. 
Let us go to um, Pauline on, oh, she's not listed actually, but she's Pauline and I, I think she's there. Are you there, Pauline? Yes, I am here. Hello. Hello. How, how are you? Oh, well, there you go. This is, this is it. This is one of those days. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? No. Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. So let me just do your, let me just do your chart. Okay. So, uh, I don't have my mouse. Oh yeah, I do have a mouse here actually, I think maybe. Let's have a look. Are you going to work little mouse? Had a last minute change of computer today, so it all went a bit pear shaped. Pauline, December, I can see your chart, okay? So let me just do your chart. All right. Tell us what's up, Pauline. What would you like to know about? Um, I guess maybe I'd like to know what Saturn's going to be doing to me because I don't remember those last two times we've passed my, um, so this is the last round. It's coming back around. I might as well uh, find out what I'm going to be in for with Saturn. <laughs> Oh, Uranus, okay. Not Saturn, right. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if it's affecting you. So, Pauline, where are you with that lovely, thick accent? Is it? Are you in New York? I'm in New York in Queens County, Flushing. The, oh, you're Flushing. in Flushing. I, I drive through there every time I fly to New York. We go through Flushing Meadow. It, oh, that's right, the airport. You, you don't come into the International JFK? I thought yeah, no, I do. I'm go through Flushing because I know Flushing Meadow from the tennis. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I've been here for 30 years, 40 years almost now. Yeah. Anyway, beautiful accent you have there. All right. So, Pauline, I'm looking at your chart and uh, actually you've just come out of a pretty difficult cycle. So, how are you feeling? Has it been a bit challenging or you've all been good? Especially... Yeah, I'm actually working at getting here. Oh, good, 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 good time to do. Yes. Like you said, 2022, I always knew this was a good year for me. Oh, did you? Well, you're right. It is. So, do you work? Okay, and, and so what do you do that people know you for? Like, what is poorly known, huh? I was taking on too much in my body. I was taking on people's stuff, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. So you've retired? Yes, I retired from it. I'm healing me now. I've got through all the nonsense that wasn't mine, all the energies I took on of other people, and now I'm, I'm, I'm down to me. And, um, so what do your friends and family, what do your friends and, what do your friends and family know you for? What are you known for? They think I'm just a loony. They just think I'm a loony. <laughs> they don't know what I'm about. They have no idea. I have another sister who's a healer, but she's no longer in commission either. She's been, she had a stroke and she's no longer doing her work. I never really went out there. I sort of used to teach, you know, your modality. One year was up, but then I stopped, like I said. Well, that's, um, yeah, it was like, you know, yeah, my, one of my relationships really blew up in my face, and uh, that was really where I was trying to recover from. I see, I okay. Many relationships, and it's just been horrible. The and last 10 years, um, clearing and clearing, getting down to my core self. Right. Sounds amazing. It sounds like you're so conscious to be doing that. That's, that's really good. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully it helps other people in the future so they don't have to go through all this bullshit for so it takes so long. It doesn't you have to take this long. But I went the long way. I had to go experience everything. And what would you do to help people? I'm just trying to work out how, how bad that is. <laughs> and what would you do to help people? So what was that? What would you do to help people? Like if you were... Um, you know, you say, I like to help other people. How would you help them? They don't need to be in their head so much. Being in your heart was when I was always innocent. Before I started taking all these classes, I started 
to get it in my head, and that was where I had trouble. If I stayed innocent like a child and was like in my heart more, I was never affected. I was really connected to my spirit, to the higher source, and I never realized that I had the I had the keys already. And then I screwed up by taking classes and all the stuff, and I showed other people shortcuts when I when when people were coming in that they didn't know anything, and I you know warned them about this person and that person what they weren't teaching the right way. I, I didn't know what I was doing, honestly, but now I think, now I have to have been through so much. I, I have discovered how to connect with my spirit is just going inside my heart, and that's where I find my answers now, and I don't go as much outside of myself. So that's why I'm studying. I'm studying astrology now because there's a galactic part of me that I'm trying to reconnect with, and this, this is really important that astrology is part of it. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give you a card today, Pauline. That's what I'm going to give you. Is that, is, is that okay? Oh. That's right. <laughs> wait, wait there, Pauline. I'll talk to you in the break. Pauline? Yeah. I didn't have any more time left, you're right. But it's not because you went on and on. We were just talking. So, okay, let me give you a... I'll give you a quick little reading now in the break because we've got a few minutes. So you've just had Saturn going over your Venus, which can be really difficult romantically or financially. But you're saying that you you had a really difficult relationship. Were you saying 10 years ago? Right. I just not meant to be right now, at least, and maybe ever. So it's funny you mentioned that. And money-wise, too, I'm having a lot of, like, I'm trying to settle all my money. I've been overspending, and I need to, like, yeah, get disciplined. Get so it back, rein it back in. Those are the most important things, and I'm happy that you just gave me that info. Verifying what I'm going through. Yeah, well, the good news is that Saturn has finished with your Venus okay for another 30 years or for the conjunction so in fact you shouldn't um, any what you really need to do at this point is learn any lessons that the last year or two have taught you about relationships and money okay Saturn's finished done his job now so think about and Saturn's actually now going to support you um, because it's going to come up to a sextile with your sun, which is obviously a positive alignment, and your Mercury. So you need to think, what are the lessons of the last two years that I need to learn? Okay, that's the number one thing. And the other reason, the reason why I was trying to get you to talk about your what you do that people know you for, what are you known for, is because actually Uranus is in your 10th house, which is what you're known for. If you don't work, it can be what you do. Um, privately that people know you for or it can be if you want to launch a career you've I actually like to network with people. I, I, I'm a very good networker I'm always like, trying to put people together that's what the 10th house is about groups right no that's the 11th house is about groups um, the 10th oh, house okay. is about career and ambitions and what you want to achieve in the world and you know so oh, yeah. that's what you've got right now. And it's actually Uranus is the planet of technology. And it's going to be going over your MC, which is your career line. So overall, now's a really good time. If you wanted to do any sort of side hustle work, really good time to do it online. Um, but also, you know, there could be changes for you when it comes to your career because you've got the planet of change in there and it's harmonious. So changes in a good way. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I drew. Somebody can tell it's a great healer, but I'm afraid to go back into that. So I think that if I, if I get myself back in order and know, and, you know, be very clear what I'm doing, then maybe I could be. But I don't really want to be a healer. I'd rather teach people to heal themselves, and that's it. Okay, but if you teach people to heal them, if you teach people to heal themselves, you're still being a healer. 
So I drew you a card. I don't know if you're watching on Facebook as well, but it's the King. Oh, your question or comment. hang on, Pauline. We'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, so we're back after the break. Um, I've been chatting to Pauline um, just off air, but Pauline, I'm just going to finish by saying we've talked about a bit, had a little bit of a reading. Here's your card. I drew you a card, okay? So are you ready for the card? Yes, I am. It's an interesting card. You got clear your mind. Clear your mind. So... You need to clear away any energetic debris in your mind, okay? Now, it's very interesting because Pauline was saying that she's worked on herself, she's been working on a shadow. You're obviously very, you know, conscious, um, but, you know, you're saying you don't, you're scared to go back into healing, although you're saying you'd like to teach healing and you are, that would be very healing for people. Let me just read it to you. Okay, fretting is a sweet sounding word for feeling anxious. Drawing this card suggests that you or someone close to you is fretting, and I think it's you fretting a little bit. As you, are, as you already know, this won't help you move closer to your goal, as it means you're directing thoughts and energy into what you don't want rather than what you do want. Deliberately manifesting a goal comes from a happy place where you feel good, so focus on making a list of your concerns and then talk them through to clear your mind. This is far more likely to bring good results. So since you're not quite sure of what to do next, why don't you do that? Talk and talk through and uh, clear your mind, okay? So while uh, manifesting mix, while racing thoughts can be problematic, getting stuck in repetitive thought patterns isn't any good either. Find a balance. Um, and you're manifesting magic do you ever work with crystals, Pauline, or do you have a crystal shop near you can go shopping? Oh, I have tons of crystals, yes. Oh, okay, cool. So the crystals, oh, the crystals for you with this card, um, blue calcite, which you may or may not have. Everybody has clear quartz. Have you got a clear quartz? Um, a blue yep. lace agate, garnet, amethyst. Everybody okay. has amethyst. Um or hematite. So just grab one of those and meditate. Oh, you got them all. <laughs> Amazing. So grab them, put them around you, sit down to meditate, put them in a circle around you and just meditate and ask, uh, let me see, ask, ask Carly to come in and clear away any mental debris that needs clearing. All right. Oh, the chanters are amazing, aren't they? Yes, I need to. I need to get back them as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for having started that and 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 fabulous. Oh gosh, you're so welcome, Pauline. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, it's all good. All right, so there we are. I hope that helped you. Um, I, ho I hope that helped you. And you today. got on. So, so good manifesting. Good manifesting. All right. So that was Pauline in New York. And uh, she sounds like an amazing person. I'd like to meet you, Pauline, one day if I come to New York again, which hopefully I will before too long. So let us uh, now, before we take another call, let's turn our minds to um, the fact that Mercury is about to go retrograde. OK, Mercury is about to go retrograde and... Uh, Basically, it's going to be happening in the sign of Aquarius, um, at least to start with, okay? So I'm just going to tell you what day it's going to go retrograde. Just give me a second, because um, I swapped computers halfway through. It's a bit awkward, actually. Um, and I don't have a mouse. Where are we? Okay, so basically, it's around the middle of the month, about the 13th of the month, so about three days from now it's going to start stationing retrograde 
Now, what does Mercury retrograde mean? What does it mean? Well, I actually wrote a whole book about it with my lovely astrologer friend, um, Kim Farnell. So I'm just going to read you a little bit, okay? We'll take, we'll take the energy down a notch or two so we can all just chill out a bit because it's been a bit intense today. So Mercury retrograde. Mercury is the communications planet. Wherever you, whenever you open your mouth to talk, or when you write something, anything from an email to a novel or beyond, even if you just think or listen to someone, you're using your Mercury. It's the mind planet and it guides how you talk, write, otherwise express yourself and take in information. It's your intellectual process. Knowing which sign and house your Mercury is in will tell you how you think and express yourself, even how you negotiate. So Mercury is also the transport planet and the planet of short journeys and commuting. It governs trade and commerce, plus it governs your wit, thoughts and thirst for knowledge, your desire and ability to learn. Do you think quickly? Do you like to analyse things? Are you a fast learner? Are you a fast talker? Can you keep secrets? These sorts of questions will be answered when you learn about your Mercury. Mercury is the trickster of the zodiac and it's also the quick silver planet. All right. If you, th if you think too hard or you overthink, look to your Mercury for a, an explanation. So now, with all that said, basically what happens is that up to four times a year, just because of our, the way the planets move around the sun and our vantage point here on Earth, it looks like Mercury is going backwards, which is when we have Mercury retrograde, okay? And that's what we're going to have as of this week. And by the way, it's actually going to be going backwards at the same time as uh, Venus, the planet of love and abundance, is also going backwards. So we're basically having Mercury and Venus both retrograde at the same time, which is kind of good and kind of difficult. I mean, you know, Venus retrograde is not bad. It's like really good time to make up with a friend. Um, I've actually got a little mini Venus retrograde course, which you can probably find if you dig around on my website a bit, yasmanbolan.com, although I'm not quite sure where it is on there. Um, and I do have this Mercury retrograde book. And if you go to, if you don't have a copy of it yet, and you go to mercuryretrogradebook.com, you can get the book, but you'll also get a whole lot of goodies. But let's look at what uh, it says about the upside of Mercury retrograde in Aquarius, because that's what we're going to be dealing with this time around. It's Mercury retrograde in Aquarius at the start of the cycle. This, oh, well, this is good. Guess what? This is a good time for intellectual growth. That makes sense. You can throw out any outmoded ideas based on what you think is right and replace them with real facts by looking into matters more deeply and asking questions. Well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because um, what's been going on with the V-I-R-U-S for the past 18, 19, 20 months. It's been everybody saying, do your own research, and I think this, and I think that. So that's going to be interesting. Maybe what the, how that's going to translate is the world is going to be rethinking uh, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, maybe because if we are moving out of this period, we'll be thinking about masks. I mean, I'm not anti-masks by any stretch of the imagination. I've been wearing masks the whole of the pandemic just because I decided... I made that decision that if it was possibly going to help me not infect someone else, I would do it. Um, but I also work from home, so it's not like I'm having to be outside or working, you know, on my feet all day wearing a mask. So I'll just re read that again. You, but it's actually not just you, it's we as a planet. We can throw out any outmoded ideas based on what we think is right and replace them with the real facts by looking into matters more deeply and asking questions. You feel creative and ideas th flow thick and fast. Your final decisions should wait, but you can begin to reevaluate everything. Aquarius has a very charitable side to it. So if, you had, if you've got plans to do something for the good of the planet that got shelved because life got too busy or because pandemic, 
this is a great time to take up that plan again. It's also a good time when you can be more mentally detached, a good thing in science and finances amongst other things, but less good for dealing with loving relationships. So five things to do when Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, which it will be as of about three days from now. All right, decide whether any group or society that you belong to suits your needs. So just have a think about any clubs that you belong to or you know anything like that. Check your computer for viruses and malware because Aquarius technology. Review your dearest wishes. Do you still what what sorry, do you still want what you used to want? Now that's an interesting one. Mercury retrograde in Aquarius is basically humanity thinking again. And I think that's what we're getting now. We've had the big quit, the big resignation. We've had nearly two years of this pandemic and people living in a different way and, you know, coming up with ideas about how they want to live. This Mercury retrograde in, in Aquarius is going to be all about that. And, you know, like I've been working from home, uh, I don't know, 20 years now. And, you know, I just couldn't understand why anybody wanted to go into an office. And I know some people have missed the office. <laughs> But so many people have gone, you know what? I'm going to work from home for the rest of my life. So that's all very sort of Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. People deciding, humanity deciding, rethinking things. Look up an old friend you haven't seen in years. Very good time to do that um, and get back to your astrological studies. And just what to watch out for, okay? Old friends may re-enter your life, but you'll need to reassess what friendship actually means to you. It might be that someone close to you lets you down or doesn't act as you expected. Uh, beware of squabbles, misunderstandings and miscommunications amongst your friends. Committing to talking things through again with friends is key. So I've had a bit of an upset uh, with a girlfriend of mine, um, actually to do with COVID related issues. You know, when you just don't agree with someone, um, you know, about whatever, masks or vaccines or Novak Djokovic or <laughs> whatever. We've actually had a bit of an upset, probably the biggest upset we've ever had in our friendship. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll talk things through again. Maybe. So I'm just going to tell you how it's going to affect you, okay? If you know your rising sign, listen to that because it's more accurate than listening just to your sun sign. If you're Aries or Aries rising, it's your 11th house of friends. So it's very much about a second chance with friends or rethinking, reviewing, revising things to do with friends. If you're Taurus or Taurus rising, it's in your 10th house. So expect some mix-ups to do with work, but also a chance to go back and do things um again career wise ambition wise maybe an old thing you used to th almost did will come back if you're gemini or gemini rising it's in your ninth house which is to do with study travel and adventure so maybe some second chances to do with that if you're a moon child or moon child rising that's the sign of cancer it's in your eighth house sex and money so second chances review rethink revise anything to do with sex and money Leo or Leo rising, it's a big one for you because it's starting off in your seventh house, which is your relationship zone, okay? So it's about second chances in love. If you're a Leo or Leo rising, don't be surprised if an ex gets in touch in the next few weeks. And uh, if you want to get in touch with an ex, it's going to be a good time for it. Just wait for Mercury to go retrograde, although it's nearly there. At this point, we're getting the strong Mercury retrograde vibes. If you're Virgo or Virgo rising, it's in your sixth house. So it's a chance for you to re rethink, revisit, revise your daily work routines and also any health routines. If you're liberal or liberalizing, it's in your fifth house, which is nice because it means you're getting a chance to rethink, revise, revisit some fun stuff. There might be a bit of confusion to do with a child or a romance or a creative project, but overall it can be a good time to go back to something that's your idea of fun that you haven't done for a while. If you're Scorpio or Scorpio rising, it's in your fourth house. So expect second chances and maybe a bit of confusion to do with home and family or maybe going back to see family or even going back to an old home. If you're Sag or Sag rising, it's in your third house. So that's what we call a double whammy because Mercury is the planet of the mind and communication. The third house is the house of the mind and communication. So it can be a bit confusing, but it's also quite a good chance to say something you should have said earlier. 
if you are Capricorn or Capricorn rising, it's in your second house. So the best thing to do here is to have another think about your self-esteem and what you're worth and what your talents and assets are and what you have to offer the world. Think about that and that in itself can also lead to second chances, review, revise, revisit financial issues. So it can be a time to restructure your finances. If you're Aquarius or not restructure, to rethink your finances. If you're Aquarius or Aquarius rising, it's in your first house. So basically your whole life can be redone at this point. You can rethink everything, but especially if you're Aquarius rising, okay? And uh, if you're Pisces or Pisces rising, it's in your 12th house. So it's a chance for you to um, have another think about your spiritual life, especially if you've fallen off the spiritual bandwagon. So that is my Mercury retrograde book. Uh, written with the amazing Kim Farnell. And, um, you know, go to mercuryretrogradebook.com if you're interested. You can get the book. Um, it's actually coming out in paperback, so order that because it's going to be cheaper than the hardback. That's the hardback. Um, get the paperback and you'll get a whole lot of goodies um, when you give me your order number. So there we go. So that is Mercury Retrograde. And it's kind of interesting because... Um, you know, it's the start of the year and here we are having sort of chances to rethink, revise, revisit. Let me see. I'm going to go to the, excuse me, I'm going to go to the lines and I'm going to take a call from whoever is on line three. All right. That is you, Teresa, on line three. Come on in, Teresa. Hello. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm just putting your chart in. So tell us, Teresa, where are you? What's happening? How are you feeling? What can we do you for today? I am fabulous. I'm on the ocean in Santa Barbara, California. Oh, very fancy. I'm 58 years old. I'm 58 years old, so I believe I'm in my second Saturn return. I am... Um, I was thinking of talking to you. I want to leave my job. I thought, no, I don't want to say I want. I am leaving my nine to five. Wow. And, um, I've gotten very, very spiritual, and I, I've been following you for a number of years, and I just want to thank you. Thank you. I had Moonology 2021, and I also now have Moonology 2022 to help guide me. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Teresa, um, I can't find the town that Louis has written down for you. Borealis, is it? Say, say again. You're... Oh, Corvallis. Oh. Oregon. Oh, how do you spell it? C-O-R-V-A-L-L-I-S. Corvallis, okay. All right. Okie dokie. All right. So you are, oh, gosh. You are, um... Taurian with Aries rising and a Virgo moon. Now, the reason why I said, oh gosh, is because you know we were talking about the planet Uranus, the planet of chaos and change and sudden changes and radical turnarounds and all that. Were you listening at the start of the show? Um, because, yeah. right, well, guess what? You are literally, like, funnily enough, I wish I could show you your chart, but your um, sun is. S-U-N, is at 11 degrees of Taurus. And uh, Uranus was literally just there and has now just gone backwards again over your sun. And then finally, you're going to go, it's going to go forwards again um, in, uh, in, on January the 18th, so 10, about a week from now. So it's the ideal time for you to be making big changes in your life, like you're saying about quitting your job and all that. Just be careful, Teresa, because... Uranus, I told you, has this sort of electric energy like a pinball machine of just ping, 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 just crazy, crazy, crazy. So just make sure that you that you set up whatever's coming next. Set it up before you just quit your job, like assuming you need money. Maybe you don't need money. Maybe you've got so much money in the bank and invested you're going to live off that. But if you need an income, just make sure that you don't kind of go a little bit crazy like the ball in the pinball machine because that's what this energy can do to you I'm not saying don't quit your job it's a great time to be making changes but make sure you have the next thing lined up that you can ping over to 
What are you going to? Well, I'm leaving a very secure, um, uh, I, I support the family, that's how much money I make, to... Um, to well, well, what do you do? To, uh, work gu guiding, guiding people uh, to their soul's destiny through their natal charts, through their north node, through their Chiron, moon to Chiron. Okay. I've been it for years, but I've just never been serious about getting out there. Right, but you still manage to support the family. Okay, so is that what you're doing now? Yes. And what are you going to do when you make this big change? No, I'm sorry. That's that's where I want to go. I, I Kurt, what I do now is I run a hotel. I go into oh. a job nine to five, and I have staff, and I I'm very blessed. I'm very I'm I'm very very grateful. I'm I, I have it made because I can leave early. I'm the boss, kind of thing. But but I, I don't need I, I don't want the where I don't want the, are you the manager? You know, I'm tired of the drama and I really want to get more in tune with people. I want, I want to help other people get more awake, awoken, awake, you know. Wake them up. Well, perfect. So what I would do, because I have a very cautious Capricorn moon, is I would be building my clientele up by my work, say, on, you know, one evening a week and once or twice or three times on the weekends build your clientele up so that you're not going to take this amazing leap and then suddenly go oh my god i've got no money left what am i going to do so just be sensible you're a tory and you understand that yes 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 thank you so much that's so true and you have a virgo moon so you know how to count your pennies and make sure you've got what you need just tap into all of that Oh, uh, you're so welcome. Let me just tell you one more thing, Teresa, before you race off. Because um, you are Aries rising, so you do like to go at speed. Um, <laughs> Saturn return. Actually, it's going to hit in uh, April is when it's going to begin. And uh, yeah. so that's a very big time in your life. I'm just going to see how it's going to retrograde, actually. Sorry, I have to... Oh, it is going to retrograde. So you're going to get three hits of Saturn return. So the last one will be basically from April. I had I had a reading and someone said, "Oh, I can't wait for April to come." But what what is your feeling on that? You know, what is it? I know what it means. I know Saturn is the teacher, but what what do you think? Well, I mean, the thing is, because you kind of have a plan, you're 10 steps ahead because you're thinking okay I know what I want to do I want to make some changes changes written all over your chart um, I think it just sort of underlines the fact that you have to be prepared before you take the leap you know because otherwise Saturn yeah. will kick your butt so you need to get all your yeah. all your yeah. financial ducks in a row you said you're earning good money now you don't want to suddenly go down to earning $35 a week do you know what I mean? You need to get that set up before you do anything rash. Oh, I just appreciate you so much. You, you have so much more common sense, and that's what I'm attracted to. And not the big leap people. I, I have to have my ducks in a row, you know? Yeah, of course, because otherwise then you just regret it, and you have to then try and go and get your old job back, and then that's a nightmare, and, you know. You, <laughs> you, yes. You don't want any of that. I'm picking you a card, all right? Can I pick you a card? Oh. Oh, yes, please. All right. So as you go about making all these changes, practice gratitude. So I would say make that your thing for the year as you go towards, you know, the start of a new life, which also actually lines up really well with your Saturn return to sort of, you know, start a new cycle. 
make sure you just keep being grateful and and you know you said i'm really blessed i've got this great job and all this and blah 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 so you're already you're already practicing gratitude but keep being grateful for all that you've got and then when you get your clients be grateful for them but the other thing as well is um you know make sure you set yourself up and get your website up, up and running and get your get your social media happening and get your your first 10 or 20 clients you know and then and then go for it absolutely i teach gratitude i'm almost in tears it's so funny I, wow I, I, I Ah. I can't believe how on this is. Okay, well, in that case, uh, Teresa, I would say that this card is actually kind of like an affirmation to you that one thing you should really pursue yeah. when you start to launch yourself into your new career is focus on the gratitude practices that you're already teaching. You're so welcome. Have you got a website? I, I'm building one now. I, 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 I've been actually sitting on it for nine months. I paid for the domain and I don't know how to do it. And I just said, Pleh. and now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm more encouraged than ever to just find somebody, hire them, whatever. Do put something on paper, you know? Yeah, so just no, get I, it done. I, I, and I am, a, I am a teacher. I am a teacher on Insight Timer. I teach ah. my gratitude. Timer, so yeah, no, I have that. I will find you. Okay, <laughs> darling, got to cut it off because we got about eight seconds left on the show. But teach gratitude. That I think that's the message from the universe. And everybody else, I'll see you next week. Lots of love and thank you for being here today. All right, great job. Is Teresa still there? Ah, okay. I just, I just wonder if I found her. All right, brilliant. Thank you, Louis. Have a great week. Hey, before you go, um, it looks like we are doing a live show next week. Oh, great, um, fantastic. It's Martin Luther King Day, so we usually have the day off. But Diane is, uh, I guess, a lot of people want to do live shows, so we're going to go with it. All right, brilliant. I'll see you next week. In that case. Okay. Thank have a good you. Week. Bye. You too. Right. So there we go, guys. Oh. So is that Teresa G. Angel? Is that you that was just on the show? Are, are you um, Teresa Andrew, who I found doing a gratitude meditation on Insight Timer? Who knows? Hello, Miss Tracy. Bye, Alicia. Yes, I'll see everyone tonight. Tonight I'm doing, um, if you're in my Sun, Moon and Stars meditation, we're doing a meditation night at 6 p.m., and uh, we're just going to do like a half hour meditation. And then um, at seven, I'm actually going to do a very big thing um, all about why you need a new moon planner for the year ahead. So there we go. All right, guys, lots and lots of love. And uh, I'll see you soon. Mwah. Ciao.